Good everyone, welcome to ITS 306 Web Development 2. So this video is going to be a reference when it comes to creating your website. This is about e-commerce functions, user access control. So last meeting we've already created our sign up page using HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap. And this time we're going to add functionalities to it. So our topic today, or our uh, Basically, the content of this video will be about adding functionalities to the website, particularly user access control. What exactly that means and why is it important in creating websites and how to do it. Alright, so please uh, make sure to listen attentively and watch out for the codes. Make sure to um, understand and listen attentively to help you get through with your website. If you have any questions or clarifications send it through our group chat so today we'll talk about user access control that contain that consists of creating databases sign up or register sign in or log in and sessions so first of all let's talk about what exactly is user access control user access control refers to the process of managing and controlling access to resources or functionalities within a system based on the identity and permissions of individual users. It ensures that only authorized users are granted access to specific resources or perform certain actions, while unauthorized users are restricted from accessing sensitive information or performing privilege operations. The simplest form of access control of access con user control access is the following first is creating database sign up or register sign in and sessions so basically user access control allows us to con um, to um, control how the users access the system or the website based on their privilege let's say for example if since our website are e-commerce websites that means we are trying to sell products that means um, users a uh, public users can view our products but that's the only thing that they can do if they want to proceed with the checkout they have to create a login uh, they have to create an account to log into the system and then and that's the same case with admin users as well so the public users cannot control anything else but admin users can either add products um, edit the prices of the products or perhaps the product details delete products, add sales, etc. So we're going to divide the users between admin and public users. So the admin users have full control on what to do with the website and then the public users can just view the, just view the website and then nothing else. Okay, so again, for, for our, in our website, the simplest way to create and user access control is by doing all of this. First is we're going to create a database, of course that is for us to be able to create users. So we're going to create sign up or register users and then sign in or log in um, after we've created the, the users, um, after we created the users and then after that, there has to be a session. What do you mean by session? How does it work and why is it important? Let's talk about it in just a moment. So let's start by creating databases. First, you will need to create a MySQL database and a table to store user information. The easiest way to do is through localhost slash phpMyAdmin. So assuming that you've already turned on your XAMP control panel, go to localhost slash phpMyAdmin and on the left side, you will see all the database stored on your on, on your XAMP, on your, your MySQL server. So, um, to create a database, I've already discussed it, but just a review, just click on new. And then create the database name. So I'm going to call it Kicks, And then create. So this will allow you to create the database. Next is we're going to create how many um, tables. We're going to add the table. And then we're going to set how many columns. So in this case, we will start with our, our user. So we're trying to create user access control so we're going to create accounts for the users so um, so we will start by creating users and then we will add 
columns. So remember, last meeting, um, in our previous lesson, we decided that we're going to create eight columns. So that's going to be the username, the um, first name, last name, password, uh, what else? Um, address, um, shipping address, um, contact information, gender, and email address. Maybe I missed something, but those are the eight um, columns or eight fields that we'll be using. Therefore, that's going to be the number of columns that we're going to add as well. But we have to add one more for the user ID. The user ID controlled that the user ID will be a primary key. That means um, every table must have their own primary key, right? So we're going to create one more field, one more column for um, the user ID. And again, that will serve as our primary key. And uh, it will set it to auto increment. That means it's, we're not going to do anything about it. It's just that every time that we're going to add a user, it will automatically add on the user ID. So it will automatically assign a specific user ID for that user. Okay. So that means we're going to add nine columns. Go ahead and create. And then let's start filling up with this information, with the data types, etc. So first, let's start with the user ID. So in writing the name of the user um, on the columns, um, there's not much um, rules on doing it. You just have to make sure the best practice or the best practice would be make sure to write it, them all in all our case. And if it consists of two words, make sure to separate them with either um, hyphen or underscore. Okay, or you can just remove this space altogether. So I, for the meantime, let me add. Um, underscore so if I'm going to create columns that has two word two words in, in my case or what I usually do is I put hyphen or underscore so for the user ID we'll set it to int let's set um let's say about 19 um uh, yeah 10 limits uh, the length is 10 that means it can have 10 digits etc or we can either add more let's say all right let's just keep it to 10 and then go to index, make sure to set it to primary. That means we are setting it as primary key. Click go. Um, I'm pretty sure you already know what that means. Um, the general idea is that each table must have their own primary key. In that way, we can um, create a relationship between different tables or different databases. So that means if we're going to trace this database kicks or this table rather, um, users we can always refer to its primary to the user id as our primary key All right and then let's set the let's set it to auto increment or ai that means it will every time that we're going to add user it will automatically add the number okay so we don't necessarily have to do anything to it it's just the database will automatically add a number every time that we're going to add a user so that number that will be added will be automatically be assigned to the user so it's like assigning an ID to that user but automated next is we're going to set username uh, let's set it to varchar variable um, character that means we can have multiple um, data types either integer variable um, integer um, let's say string character um, etc okay and let's set it to 50 limit that means it can have up to 50 uh, 50 letters we can either add more but I'd, for in my case I'm just going to add 50 then after that we're going to add password let's set it to varchar as well let's have another 50 limitation and then just keep everything else just the same and then let's have the first name first underscore name let me give it about 50 limitation as well. Same thing for the last name. Uh, let's add it to Varchar, by the way. Let's give it 50 again. And then let's say the email address. Yeah, email. I'm sorry. Email address. Let's add it to Varchar. Let's give it about 50% uh, 50 limitation and then what else um, gender Varchar let's give it about 20 and then shipping address 
All right, let me double check just to make sure. So, password, first name, last name, gender, phone number, rather. Okay, so after the gender, we'll have the phone number. Let's set it to Varchar. Let's give it about 20. And then the, lastly, the shipping address. Address. Let's set it to Varchar, and then let's give it about 100. Okay. So once everything's done, so let's review. We have the user ID, user ID as our primary key, auto increment, username, password, first name, last name, email address, gender, phone number, shipping address, etc. We can probably add more if you'd like to, but in this case, we're just going to set it like this. Or perhaps it would be best if we can add, um, let's say, date of birth. Okay, so after the last name, we will add date of birth. So in this case, since we've already added all nine columns, we can add one. So just click on the add one column and then click go. And then let's set it to DOB. Okay. DOB, let's set it to bar chart and let's keep it about 20 as well. However, I want this to be, hold on. All right, it's okay. Let's save it. And then let's go to structure just to review. So we have here our user ID, username, password, first name, last name, email address, gender, phone number, shipping address, and date of birth. So let's see if I can change. All right, let's drop this one, the date of birth in the meantime, so we can put it somewhere after the last name. So I'm going to drop the um, date to birth for the meantime and then I'm going to add one column after the last name so after last name I'm going to add one column and then that's time that I'm going to add DLB or date of birth let me save it to bar char and then length is about 20 and then save the date of birth should be after the last name so again username Password, first name, last name, date of birth, email address, gender, phone number, shipping address. Okay, so let's go back. So basically, this is how my sign up form look like. It doesn't really look good, but I guess that is beside this uh, beside a point. You can always change it to however you, you can always design it to however you want. But just for the sake of discussion, I'll keep it as it is. And then and I'm just going to add date of birth real quick. So, if you're not so sure how to create a date of birth, you can always go back to. You can always go back to um, getbootstrap.com. Okay. Okay, and then go to Docs, and then go to Form, and then look for Date. So I think it's in Form Control, and then let's look for Date. Input, okay, here. Input, and then let's look for Date. All right, anyway, uh, we're just going to copy all of this um, after the last name. 
last name we're going to copy this and then instead of text we'll set it to input type and then date and then let's call it date of birth all right let's take a look let's save that and let's reload here okay so we can always change the date here all right so next assuming that you're already done with the sign up page the next thing that we're going to do is to add functionalities to it so here's an example of an sql code to create a table named user so basically if you don't use php my admin you can use this to create the table next create a sign up form using html css bootstrap etc so which we're already done with that so we'll skip this part right here let's this is also an example if you would like to check and then basically this form sends a da the data to a php script name register.php when the user clicks the sign up button let's create the register php script to handle the form submission and insert the data into the database so before we proceed let's take a look on the form action so in this case this is really important that means every time that we're going to click on the sign up icon it will route us to an app to a page that contains all the functionalities use that is using the post method all right so that means here if we're going to click after we fill this out with the information that we need if we click sign up it will route us to another page that contains the functionalities for adding the contents or the data to our database okay and that will be using the post method so we're just going to do that let's go back to our code and then scroll up to the form here okay so this is copied from bootstrap you already know that so right now it's only listed as form. it's only written as form so we're going to add action and then we will add register or let's say, yeah register dot php okay and then method is post okay so that means if we click the sign up icon if we click the sign up button rather um where it is this one if we click this button it will route us to the another to another page called register.php using the post method what the post method does is it will take all the information all the data that we've input on the field diba Alright, it will take this information. Let's say if we're going to add username, this username, this word in the username will be carried by the post method and then transfer it to the register.php. Remember, right now we are currently inside signup.php. So for us to transfer the, the list of information from signup.php to another page, which is register.php, we will use the post method. So it will take all this information that we um, from the field and then bring it to another page. How exactly did you do that? Here's what we're going to do. Make sure to set, remember that each input, hold on. Yeah, this input right here, we have to give them a specific name. Again, each of these input must be given with a specific name that will serve as, uh, that will be needed for the post. That means, when we transfer shock information from input, it has to be stored somewhere. Okay, it has to be stored somewhere so it can be brought to different web pa um, web pages using the po post method post. All right. So how do we do that? It's very simple. Look for all the input types that you've set, and then add. Let's add another attribute called name. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to put since this is username, I'm going to put user underscore name. So please keep in mind, however it is that you read, uh, however you write the name, the name, you have to take note of that because we'll be reading that later on as we transfer the contents to another page. So again, look for all the inputs and then make sure to add name and then the name must be, um, uh, the best practice is the, the name that you're going to put, let's say, for example, for the username, 
it must be similar to how you write it on your columns as well all right it's not really required but it's a good practice okay so again for the name since we'll be needing this to save the contents to the database make sure that the name will match on however you write the columns so that means the username should look like something like this and then um, username all right and then email address let me check if I say set an email address username okay let me put the email address down uh, let me just rearrange this real quick so after the username it has to be the password okay and then here I think it we should put it email address okay so it's a little off but since we've already written the email address after the date of birth so it's supposedly the email address should come first but since we already did that um, I think we can fix it okay uh, let's put the email address right about here after the password and then in this case we're going to drop okay let's see if we can change the location hold on all right we can so we're going to drop the uh, the email address we're going to drop this and then we, we will put another column after the password and then let's call it email address let's set it to varchar let's give it about 50 limit 50 length and then save and it should be right below password okay that's good all right let's get back to okay so for the password let's give it name and then password and then for the email address let's also give it name and then email address same with the confirm password so let's call it name confirm password and then for the first name let's give it name and then first name and then for the last name same case we're going to add name last underscore name and date of birth um, let's add name and then DOB since that is how I put it on the database and then gender let's add name gender and then phone number name phone number and then address okay let's set it to shipping address and then let's add a name I'm not in the label but okay hold on let me all right let me review since I guess I think I'm putting it on the label instead hold on for the it should be on the input so let's review the username and then for the password and then okay name should be inside the input not on the label sorry about that okay let's move it here and then last name date of birth should be here and then gender and then the phone number should be on the input and then text area the name should be shipping address okay let's take a look all right so once it's done once you've added name again this is really important this is a really important step that means we're going to assign a unique um, name for each of the field so that we can use it for transferring the contents 
from sign up that PHP to register that PHP. All right. Okay. Again, this form sends the data to a PHP script named register that PHP when the user clicks the sign up button. Let's create a register PHP script to handle the form submission and insert the data to the database. So again, this is just a form. Okay, it doesn't have any functions to it. But the actual functions, the actual commands to transfer the contents from uh, to the database would be on the register.php. So let me erase all of this. So I've already created register.php. If you haven't yet, so I'll make sure to go ahead and right click and then new file and then register.php. So I'm just going to remove all of this. Okay, um, I'm not be needing all of this. Okay, I'm just going to erase all of it. And then this time, okay, I'm just going to to make everything um, to do everything quickly. So I've already coded all the um, all the codes that I'll be needing, and then I'm going to explain it in, um, line by line. All right. So these are the codes that we'll be using. So don't you worry. We're going to discuss each of the lines individually. So again, this is the register.php. That means this functions will be executed after we click the sign up button. Okay. So if we're going after we fill this out with information, we're going to click sign up, right? So once we click sign up button, it will route us to, as you can see, let's go back to the form action. It will route us to register that PHP. That means it will it will tell the browser to hey, uh, the user clicked sign up. Please go ahead and check register that PHP for more um, contents or for more um, codes or for more functions. Okay, so that means again it will transfer whatever it is that we've input on inside sign up that PHP to register that PHP. So after after the browser check. Or the server check the register that PHP, then it will run the script, and then let's say whatever it is that we set or we set the command, then it will execute it. Okay. So again, this is for register that PHP. These are this is the actual functionalities of our sign up page. So let's discuss each of the lines, and then let's see how they work. So obviously, since this is PHP, we will start with PHP. Um, PHP tag. So to create the PHP tag, you have to create um, close angle bracket or open angle bracket question mark PHP and then close it with question mark and then close angle bracket. So the first line is connecting to my SQL database. That means we are trying to establish a connection between our database to our system. So remember, we've already created a database here. However, it's not yet connected to our system. So how do we make sure that every time that we're going to add contents to it, it will go through? So first of all, we'll have to establish connection. We have to connect our system to our database. So that's every time that we'll access the database, we have to establish a connection. Again, every time that we're going to access the database, we have to establish a connection first, okay? So how to create it, how to establish the connection? First is we're going to create a variable. Okay, this is a variable. Remember, PHP variables starts with a dollar sign. So and then you can always you can it would be up to you however it is, however you write your variable. So dollar sign con that means this is a variable is equals to this uh, my SQL I connect my SQL I connect so this is the PHP function that will connect or that will establish a connection between our system to my SQL so again my SQL uh, my SQL I underscore connect and then um, parenthesis and then inside of it will be a uh, four um, I forgot what it's called but there are four things that we're going to include inside the function first is the domain name so what do you mean by domain name so I, I in since the domain name is the i'm sorry for xm since this is oh this is just an offline server 
we are using localhost so remember every time that we're going to visit our website we should always start with localhost let's say for example here localhost slash kicks localhost is our domain name so that's the first thing that we're going to add here the domain name this may be changed if we're going to upload it over the internet if we're going to host our website this will change based on the host name okay and then username okay what do you mean by username so this is the username of localhost of our domain so um, for XM the localhost um, username is actually root okay so by default it's set to root you can always change it if you'd like to but the default one is root and then there is no password okay so for localhost there is no password by default so that means we're just going to leave it as blank so again we have here our domain name which is localhost and then the username which is root that is the default and then no password that is the default okay next is the name of your database so remember that i've created kex so that is the name of our my, of my database so i'm going to change it to kex as well so again just a recap we have here um, we're going to create a variable that contains the function of sql connection okay that is my sqli underscore connect and then this would be the domain name this would be the domain name password a uh, username and then the password and then the uh, database okay so and then of course don't forget with don't forget the semicolon now that we've created an now that we've established a connection we will check if it will go through let's check if this if gonna banish okay so to check it we will use the if statement the conditional statement so if and then con okay if this is true right however since na shy exclamation point that means it's it means the opposite means it's not all right so that means if this is not successful if it didn't went through again if not con meaning if it's not true then it will give us an error message saying connection failed and then my sqli um, connect error okay so again how to write it we will write at um if and then parenthesis containing our condition and then angle brackets and inside would be die and then inside of it would be connection failed etc okay you just have to copy this one and then you can always change how they look okay and then once it's done once it if if this is false that means they could establish or the my sql connection has been established completely or successfully it will go through the rest of the functions so first is it will get the form data okay again after the connection after the connection has been established that's the time that we're going to check to get the information from again from post method Diba? every once we click the sign up sheet or sign up button it will get all the information from the username um, password etc and then be transferred to register so we will check now ato nang kwaon gikan sa post katong iyahang mga gikopya from sign up.php so again kopya na nato og unsay naa sa post method so that we can use it for saving it to our database so how to get the data so first we're going to create variables sets arrays of variables so we will create one for username password confirm password first name all right we will add one more for email address okay let's change this to email address and then let's change it to email address okay so again um we're just going to create variables for each of the data that we get from post and then so that we can use it in adding it to our database so let's check this first line first so we again we created a variable containing username all right and then is equal to, again the value for our first variable is whatever it is that we get from this okay so we will get it from post so this is global 
um, variable. It's still a variable but global. That means it will can be applied to the rest of the web page. And we cannot change that. So underscore um, dollar sign underscore post. This is the variable for storing data using post method. So muna siya sudlanan ni post method. So we'll call it for us to get the information from post. We will write post um, dollar sign under, underscore post followed by bracket. And inside the bracket would be um, single quotation. And then this one right here. Remember that I ask you to add name. So muna siya. Okay, so whatever it is that you write on the name must be the same thing that you'll write here. Please mind on the spelling. Okay, and then semicolon. So uh, we're just going to create one variable for all of the fields. So we'll create one for password, same thing. Password. So again, as an igikan, depending on password, username, and address, it's on what we added on the name. So we'll make sure yun sa new pagsulat ang name, maupod ang display dali. Okay, so we have email address. Let's move it at the bottom after the confirm password. Okay. And then email address, first name. Okay, I think after the last name would be, let me check. After the last name is date of birth. So we will add date of birth here. dob and then dob okay and then email address and then we still have hold on one two three four five six seven eight nine right we still have one more for contact information contact number contact number let me check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Hold on. Let me check. Username, password, email address, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, email address, contact number, shipping address. Uh, phone number, rather. Phone number. All right, okay. Let's remove this one right here. So again, username, password, confirm password, email address, first name, last name, date of birth, gender, phone number, shipping address. Do we miss anything else? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. All right. So once we've once we created a variable, or once we are able to get the data from our post method, and we've already created a variable for storing them, this time we're going to check whether the password matched. Okay. So remember, going back to our field, we are we are trying to enter the password twice. Okay. So let's see if the person that we entered the password matched on the second time that we that we um on the second time that we um, entered it okay so to check whether the password match is very simple all we need to do is we're just going to create another um, if statement and then we'll check if the password which is this one right here matched on the confirm password so um, the equals the two equal sign means if they matched however if it has um, exclamation to it then that means it, if it didn't match okay so if it both the password and confirm password do not match or, or is not equal then it will give us an error message saying passwords do not match okay we'll test it in just a moment so after that we're going to once everything is ready that means we're able to establish a connection or we're able to get data from from the post and then we're able to compare whether the password match this time we will save it to our database okay so how to insert the data to the database first we're going to create um, yeah we're going to create a, another variable and in this case I'm going to call it SQL dollar sign SQL and then is equal equals 
and then two quotation marks and then we're going to write this function right here so I'm not real I'm pretty sure you've already discussed this with your database management system so it's going to be easy how to do it so remember for the da for database we can create we can do four uh, major things we have done we can create retrieve update and delete so create means we're trying to add information to the database retrieve meaning we're trying to retrieve information update is edit whatever it is that the content uh, whatever it is saved on the database and then um, last delete is remove contents or remove data so since we are trying to add information to the database therefore we will use insert okay so let me write it down so insert if we're going to add okay um, retrieve is select we're going to use select if we're going to or let's say create a lang. retrieve if we're, we're trying to retrieve a data from the database we're going to call it let's use select and if we're going to update so we have update if we're going to update information to the database or data and then delete if we are trying to delete okay so again since we are trying to create users to our database that means we're going to use insert into okay so meaning the into will be just we're trying to tell the uh, the the page to please go ahead and input those information from the post put it into users what is this the users is the actual table so remember we created gex as our database and then users is our table so if whatever it is that you written on the table that is what we're going to put right here okay and then in this case we are going to write down all of the information or all of the columns so make sure if you sa siya sa dere o put ang yung putang dito sa dere nga side. So that means I'm going to I have to change it to on user underscore name, and then next is password, and then email address, email address, and after that we have first name. So that's first name, comma, last name, comma, date of birth, comma gender comma and then phone number comma and then shipping address okay so these are the columns so make sure you can send out sa atong um, database ma upload ang atong ibutang dere okay so unsa ato ibutang diha that's the time that we're going to set the value so we're going to copy this, okay, para mabotang nato dre. And remember, if giyon sa nato pagpasunod ang columns, maupo dapat ang pasunod sa atong values. Okay, how, how did we get the values? The values came from the data that we get from the post. So that means for username, I'm going to copy that. User underscore name, that means it will copy this. And then password. And then next is we have um email address i don't forget the dollar sign then comma all right so each of the values must be enclosed with single quotation and separate them with a comma so after the email address we have the first name we have the last name and then date of birth and then gender and then contact contact number or phone number sorry it should be phone number phone number phone number so i'm going to change this to phone number as well and then let me change the, on the sign up phone number okay phone number and shipping address again first is we created the insert function to the database and then this is our columns make sure kung sa yung pasunod maupo dapat ang pasunod 
actually the best practice is you can say pasunod din mo ko the pasunod sa inyo ha query and then the values would be the data that we get from post so that means the value from our username must be added here and then password must be added here as well etc okay so take note of the sequence all right so once it's done we're going to check whether it's successful or not okay so if my sql query that means we're going to check whether it's successful we're able to add it completely we're going to verify if this one right here and this one right here is successful that means our connection is established and then if our sql query this one is is um successful that means it will say sign up successful you can always change it to whatever you want otherwise if one of them failed or both of them failed it will display an error message saying error and then mysql error etc okay so that's it please take note of the symbols that we used and then at least you know the function and you can always refer to the code for the symbols that we used so let's review what we did first we established a connection we check if the connection is successful second is we get the data from the post method we check if the password matched and then once everything is done everything all of this is good to go we've added all the information that we get from the post we added it to the database and then here we check whether it's successful or not let's save it let's save both of that and then let's check whether it's running let's reload and then let's try so username let me add last jules password is password okay let me let me fix this real quick so the confirmed password should be okay hold on sorry about that let me move this below here the email address should be right below the confirm password again let's try again okay so we have username password all right let's try less jewels password email address is julius or publico at gmail.com julius publico date of birth is All right, and then gender is male, phone number is 1234567789. Shipping address is Mabini Street by City Negros Oriental 6206. All right, and then let's click sign up. Let's see if it will go through. All right, it says here sign up successful. Let's check whether if it truly is successful or not let's go to the users and then go to okay go to browse and then it says here we're able to create the username password etc okay so as you can see the user automatically add one so that means if we're going to add another user it will also it will automatically add one more that means it will say two so let's try let's test whether the auto increment works let's go back all right, you can always fix how they look, guys. Okay, again, this is just for the sake of demonstration, but for the design, you have to do it yourself since we've already discussed designing a lot of times already. So you can change how the sign up sheet works, you can either set it to model, etc. So let's try again. Let's have, um, let's say, hmm, go T star uh, Iron Man, lang. Iron Man, password is Iron. Uh, Iron Man and then Iron Man Okay, this is just sample First name is Tony last name is Stark Date of birth is let's see
option there's mail phone number is one two three four five six seven eight nine and um let's say <laughs> angeles california all right click sign up and it says here sign up successful all right and let's check whether it's successful or not and yes indeed we're able to create another user id too containing all the information that we just added all right so that's sign up that means we're able to create a sign up sheet we're able to transfer um, a data to our database next is all right this is an example uh, for your reference so Make sure to replace username, password, and database name, this one right here, with your actual database credentials. This, this script connects to the database, checks if the password match, and then inserts the data into user's table. It will display a success message if the signup is successful. All right. So this time, since we've, we've already signed up, that means we're going to use those uh, data that we just added to log in. Okay. So once signed up, the user can log into the system. Here's an example of a login page that allows users to log in using the, their username and password. After successful login, it will redirect them to the home page. Okay, so this is an example. This form sends the data to a PHP script named login.php when the user clicked on the login button. Now let's create the login PHP script to handle the login process. So for the meantime, let me create a login login page. Okay, so we can always go back to bootstrap.php, uh, bootstrap.com. Let's go to examples and then let's look for sign in here. So we're just going to copy this. Okay, to copy that, I've already Hold on. I've already downloaded the codes. Let me get to it in just a moment. Sign in. Okay, let me copy the code real quick and then we will add it to our. our page okay okay let me create another file let me call it sign in dot php okay and then let me add the basic html5 functions Uh, hold on. And then let me just copy all the links. All right, so we have here our form. Let me check how they look. So that means if we're going to click on sign in .php here, it should look something like this. Again, you can always change how they look, uh, guys. You can always, um, for the meantime, just for the sake of the demonstration, I'm not going to do anything on the design, but on your, on your case, you have to design it, okay? You have to change the design, rather. All right, so next is, since we've already created the sign-in form, so what do we need here is uh, we have here the please sign in, and then we will sign in using our either the email address and the password. Okay, so for the meantime, for the sake of demonstration, we will use our username. Alang. Username. 
All right, that's it. So same thing that we did. Hold well on. Okay, same thing that we did. We we're also going to use the name. We're going to assign a name for our username and password, so that once we click the submit, it will use the same thing, the post method, to be transferred to another page. Okay. All right. So that means for our input, for okay, should be text, and then username, and then let's add name is equals to same thing user underscore name and then for the password same thing we're going to add name and then password let's check all right it should be username and password okay so that means if we're going to click sign in it will it should route us to um it should route us to hold on okay action so, is equals to let's sign up uh how do we call it uh sign in underscore okay all right i'm i'm not really sure with the file of uh, the naming convention but let me just add sign in underscore function or func dot php because i can't think of anything else then that means once we click the sign uh the sign up page it will route us to sign in dot func dot php using post method okay so let's check let's reload this one real quick so here's 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 a proof that here's a proof that every time that we click sign in it will route us to a different page so now that we've added uh, let's say for example we'll just add set something here if we click sign in okay uh, anyway anyway let's get back to it it's okay never mind sorry okay mm -hmm. anyway uh, we're trying to transfer to another page once we click sign in and then it will verify whether the username and password match on what we saved in the database and it should route us to again sign in underscore func dot php so that means once since we've already had it this way same thing that we did we'll add new file and then let's call it sign in func dot php and then here's some codes again let me copy this real quick Okay, so same thing that we did a while ago. The sign in func.php will contain all the functionalities. The sign in only includes the form. Okay, um, basically the field where we'll be needing, we'll be inputting our, our email address and I'm sorry, the username and the password. But the actual functionality would be on a separate page. We can, I, by the way, it's not really required that we have to transfer different files just to, to validate the. Uh, validate the um, sign in the form but this is just my way of doing it okay so let's start so the first the first thing that we're going to do since we are trying to sign in so we're going to create a session we'll discuss what, what session is all about in just a moment for the meantime uh, just add a session basically that means after we click login it will automatically create the session the session means the contents that will that the user will be seeing will now specifically for them okay whether if you don't if they're going to if they're going to close the browser and then open it again the moment that they sign in again they will still see their contents it's just the same that if, if you log in your facebook on your browser even if you're going to close the browser once you open it again you'll still log in because of session unless you're going to um deliberately log out or destroy or yeah destroy the session by logging out 
otherwise you'll you'll be asked to log in again so basically that means everything that we'll be doing here on out will be for the user that will try to sign in so the next thing that we're going to do is the same thing we're going to validate or we're going to establish a connection just like what we did a while ago so localhost and then let's change this to uh, root and then password should be blank database should be kcks now if we'll check whether it's successful or not and then username and password so my username is something like this so this time we are trying to get information from the sign in using post so user name password so same thing we are trying to get information this time we'll only be needing the username and password since we are trying to log in now that we get the data from post the username and password we're going to check whether okay we're going to check if it match on what we have on the database so remember so sign up nato is we're, if we're going to insert data we will use insert if we're going to create if we're going to retrieve or get information from our database we will use select okay since we are trying to retrieve information from the database by checking if the username and password match therefore we'll be using select okay so that means we will use select and then what do you mean by asterisk meaning all okay select all meaning it will try to check all of the fields all of the columns rather from users the users are still the table where username okay where this is the condition now we're going to check um, everything inside the users table where username okay what do you mean by this this is our okay let's check the okay it will check whether um, to check um, it will ask the it will ask the uh, browser to check or the server to check inside the users where the username okay where the username is and then etc depending on what we set on the username okay so for example if we entered on our sign in that PHP if we entered less choose for our username it will check whether the username match on what we have on our um, call on our column so you check me yeah if na by username gangangalan of let's say for example let's choose so where username is equals to this if ni match ba siya ugun siya mong input dere result then if successful then proceed so that's the first step it's two step by the way the first step is to check whether ang username ba ni match. So if na if na a username dito if ni match ang username dito sa database, yan na pong i-check, okay? So gyon sa niya pagkabalo if na ni match, if the result okay, SQL, I will going to create another variable here that that checks whether this is successful, di ba? It's the same thing that we did a while ago. If this is successful, we, we will create another variable that checks if this is successful and our connection has been established so if it's successful then it we will check if pila ka book yang makihat makita okay if tanaw niya ug pila ka book yang makita so my sql numbers yang it fetch of how many results there are so if the result is greater than zero that means either one two or more then it check niya o ang password na pod okay so we will create another variable here that fetches the result to check if the password match okay so i'm not really sure if i can explain this as easy or as yeah as easy as possible but let's just say that this function right here will, will check whether the password and the row okay the password match on mo match ba siya dito sa ato ang na ba mo match dere okay so first is gi check nato whether ni enter tag let's say for example less tools then i check niya of how many how many less tools there are and then iyang i check if na ba password ang password ni gi enter nato mo match ba siya kay less tools okay so that's it if password is in is correct then it will create a 
session okay please take note take note of this this the session which we'll be using in, in later on uh, basically if the if the login is successful it will it will create a session that means the session now belongs to the user and then it will route directly to home.php actually in this case let's route it to index.php okay the index.php is katuman siguro tong Katuma tong. Okay. So after we've successfully logged in, it will route us to this page. Okay. And then if the password is incorrect, it will say incorrect password. And if the user does not exist, it will say user not found. So let's save that and then let's reload. Let's go to sign in dot php. I'm oh, sorry. All right, and let's try less jewels, and then password is password. Hold on, password, and let's go ahead and sign in. All right, it says here incorrect password. Let me check. Let's try again. Okay, hold on. Let me fix it. It says here I'm trying to enter a wrong password. All right. After a quick search and our, I was able to find out what's what went wrong. Why it didn't? Why it didn't um went go through? So basically, the reason why it's because the okay. Let's go back. Let me try to explain it quickly. Hold on. All right, so the password verify function is actually for uh, it's actually a new function that will uh, that will verify whether the password match on password that are hashed. Okay, what do you mean by hashed password? Okay, hashing turns your password or any other piece of data into short string of letters and or numbers using encryption algorithm. So basically, um, right now, one of the flaw of our design, our program is, we actually see the password right here. Giyon sa nato pagsulat ang password, maupod ang mabutang dira. Alright, so hashing a password will convert your regular password like this into something like this. Okay, so... That's also added an added um, feature or added security for our website. So one of the flaw of our design web, website design a while ago is that our password is not safe. That means it's very, if there is somebody who is good in hacking and they're able to penetrate our SQL, and it's another word, SQL injection, they will be able to get the password easily. However, if we're going to hash the password, it would be a lot better. It would be a lot harder for them to determine what is the password our, of our, what are the passwords, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to hash the password so that the verify, the verify password will also work. So how do we hash the password? It's very easy. It's just one line of code. And that's, that is this. So after we check whether the password match, the password and confirm password, if it matched, we're going to convert the password into a hashed version. So to do so, we're going to create a new variable called hash password. And then here's the function, password underscore hash. And then we are going to change the password, this one right here, into password default. That means we're going to hash it whatever it is that we write on the password will be hashed okay again hashing is we're turning the regular password into sets of strings okay and that's it and then i will be able to hash the password let's try so let's register again let's go to log in i'm uh, sorry sign up.php 
let's add Julius to password password Okay, gender. All right, click sign up. And once it says sign up successful, let's check. All right, we're able to add Julius2 and then the password is this, etc. So, all right, so we'll try to use this to log in. So sign in dot PHP. Um, Julius, let's check, Julius2, password is password, and then sign in, it should route us to index.php. Alright, it's because it says here that after, if, okay, if this, if we're able to successfully log in, it will directly route us to index.php. Okay, so that means we're able to successfully log in. So this time, let's check, all right? So remember that we've created a session. But after we log in, we created a session, and that's going to be our next topic. A session is a way to store and track user-specific data across multiple requests and pages. When a user visits a website, the web server assigns a unique session identifier or session ID to the user. The session ID allows the server to associate sub sub subsequent requests from the same user with their session data. Okay, so that means every time nga mo, mo sign in ta, once we create a session, the server will assign a specific user, a session ID on that particular user and then it will be stored on the browser so that even if we're going to close it, the browser and then open it again, once we go back to the same web website we can still log in okay and then we don't necessarily have to sign in again the only thing that will the only way that we have to sign it sign in again if we deliberately sign out okay sessions can also play a crucial role in implementing user authentication managing user and access control and securing sensitive information by associating session data with with user identities all right so let's test so I've already shown you what the user, how to write new session. So after we successfully logged in, remember, we've already started the session. And then we specifically said that the user, ID, uh, we've created a user, uh, a session that the user ID should be equals to the one that we just entered. Okay. So that means the session is now active on the, on the following. Okay. So let's check on our, let's say, for example, let's go back. Let's open our sign uh, index that's index.php. And if we're going to let's just roughly add let's say um, a welcome message and then we'll determine who is the person logged in. So let's go to the index.php and then um, I want to put something like uh, in this area right here, just a very simple way of determining who is logged in, whose session belong session belong okay so let's check that first of all let's go ahead and on our index.php make sure that inside our hold on Yeah, let's go back so this code will first start at a session so basically we'll have to copy this file right here uh, this code will first start in the session then it checks the user id session variable is not set which indicates that the user is not logged in if that's the case it redirects to the, all right so first of all we we will set it that every time you log in oh every time you visit a user they have to log in okay so every time you visit a website sa atong website dapat siyang mo log in so i-check niya if nakalog in ba siya or wala if wala siya ka in it will route to, back to login.php okay otherwise it will just go through okay so 
let's check uh, let's do that we're going to post this and paste it in our index.php as example and if if nakalag in siya if nakalag in siya it will stay but if we're not log in, it will get us to sign up that PHP or sign in that PHP. So let's go to the index. And then we'll copy this at the top. And then the location should be sign in that PHP. All right, let's check. All right. So what if? Okay, let's add a new fold, new win, new. Ah, uh, um, on, we'll try to add access it on a different browser. Let's see if it will still work. So localhost slash gigs. All right. So remember this time, supposedly before, if we're going to click on okay, KCKS, supposedly if we're going to click on it, it will route us directly to the home page. However, since we are since we are requiring session. That means here, this one right here, it will require the user first to log in. If the wala siya naka log in, dapat i-route sa niya sa sign in PHP. So dapat ma-access lang niya ang website if naka log in siya. Alright, therefore, kung log in sa ta, let's say for example, Julius2 password. Alright, that's the time that we'll be able to sign in completely. Alright? So perhaps we will add here uh, some information of kinsa siya nakalagin and then a way of logging out as well. Uh, it's not going to look good. Again, you, this is just for a uh, mere demonstration. Obviously, you have to change how they look like on your own. Okay. So let's go to the index.php and then... All right, let's put it right about here. So it should be on the nav. Hold on. Okay, nav. After the drop down. All right, so here, this is just an example. Let's add, hold on. Okay, let's add a PHP here, PHP tag, and then we will check based on the session. Remember, we already created a session here. So we will create a variable, let's say user underscore name is equals to, unsay nakabutang sa session, so that's variable uh, session, and then username so based on the session that we've created atong kwaon ang atong kwaon ang ugun say naka save sa hold on sa username so iyang kwaon nato is ang username lang in the meantime or let's say first name na lang okay first name para sure um first name o ba is that how we write it first Name now. So all lowercase first name and then echo welcome dot 
dot first underscore name okay let's save that let's reload it real quick all right it got an error message hold on let me fix it real quick Let me just fix it real quick. Hold on. Alright, I think what, I know what's going on now. We're able to successfully create a session. However, the first name is not yet retrieved because if you can remember, on our session, we only set the username and user ID. So for us to be able to get the rest of the information of that particular user, we have to establish a connection again. So we're going to, okay, let me erase this for the moment. Alright, I know. We're not going to erase it. We're just going to move it down. And then we're going to establish a connection again. So same thing that we did. Username. So that is root. Password is blank. Database is kicks. Alright. And then we're going to create a query. And then we're going to check the user, the user that belongs with the user with the session ID. The user that belongs... Oh, the user where the session ID belongs. So, hold on. Let's create an error message in case if it didn't go through. And then, let, again, let's have a query to check. Uh, let's have a query para makita nato o uh, para makuha nato ang information o asa na bilong ang session. Kinsa na bilong ang session. So, we're going to create another SQL. Select from users where session ID, the one that we just created, belongs to. Uh, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we'll... Okay, we'll create another variable first. Let's call it session underscore ID. And then x equals to session ID. All right, so after we check whether the connection is successful, we're going to create a variable that says the session ID that we will be using should match on the session ID that we says here, the session here. Okay, so we're going to check, we're go, then we're going to add another variable that selects the user's session ID. And then if it's successful, hold on. Again, let's check if it's successful. Same thing that we've been doing. Okay, if the result is greater than one,
All right, I think we got it now. Okay, so again, we've created a session, and then that session should belong, and then we've checked whether pangitaon nato ang sa mga users kinsa na belong ang session ID, and if makita nato siya ng user, we'll be able to um, get the first name, etc. Okay, in this case, we are trying to get the first name. Let's see if it will work. All right, hold on. Okay, unclosed line two four four. Two four four. Here, sorry about that. All right, I think I got it now. Okay, the reason why it's because I set the session ID instead of user ID because we don't have any columns that has session ID. It's user ID. So again, let's review. Um, first, is we created a variable that contains a session ID. And then based on the session ID that got that we got from logging in, we check if naabay mo match ng user ID out of those. And then if na, uh, we're going to check the first name. Right? We can add more if you'd like to, but in this case, we'll just add a first name. All right? And then let's save that. And then let's reload. And it should say, welcome Julius2. Now we can either fix it on, because it doesn't re look really good. Let's see. Kadapat hayag siya. Nav item. Alright, it would be up to you how to fix it. It's not gonna, it, it's going to take a lot of time for me. However, you'll see that it has worked. It says here, welcome Julius2. So let's try to, and then let's add log out. Okay, how to log out? It's very simple. All we need to do is hold on. All we need to do is just destroy, destroy the session. So we'll create a logout page, new file, logout.php, all right, and then we will, let me paste this. All right, we want the session destroy. So session destroy will cancel all the session. So let's say let me save that and then let's set it to sign in at the HP. So inside our index, let's add here an a link that will allow us to log out. So a link and then log out at the HP. Let's save that real quick. Now let's test. Okay, here's a logout button. So if we're going to click on it, log, okay, not log in, but log out at HP. Sign in dot PHP. I'll go down. Sign in dot PHP. Let's try again. Sorry about that. Okay, let's sign in and let's try to log out. Okay, it says here, welcome Julius. And if we're going to click log out, 
it successfully logged out and it went back to sign in okay so if we have any other pages let's go back to the session so all we need to do to make sure that every time that we visit a website dapat nakalag in ang user otherwise if this you can log in it will route to the sign in all we need to do is just paste it this code right here to every page okay so let's do just that so let's go to asana randere can you say index.php all we need to do is just paste this on all pages so that every time we visit the website it will route to the it will route to the sign in para palag in siya so we're currently under um, index.php so if we go to let's say kids let's paste it right there for brands brands nike for under armor so you get the idea you all need to do is just paste it to every every single page okay for the meantime let's check for men and women okay let's say for example um since we we're currently logged out if i'm going to let's say visit women.php it will still route us back to the sign in the page because we have to log in before we'll be able to visit okay so that is user access control so let me end the video uh here uh, let's continue with the discussion at school or perhaps in our future lessons our our next activity would be this first is you you should be able to create your own sign up page login page and then create a session for each of the web pages so the session that means if you visit the website tapat unless mo log in siya, the user cannot access the the website unless they are logged in all right so that will be all for today thank you so much for um, making this far and see you guys at the class see you guys at the campus